Okay, so today's lesson is identical to yesterday's, but the sequences we're going to go over are all geometric. That means they grow exponentially. That means we're multiplying by something. So they either grow or decay by multiplying by something. Okay? So what would the things we graphed yesterday have graphed as? Does anyone know? Yeah, because they're going up. Remember this when we ended up with some kind of a a sub n equals 3n plus 5? Doesn't that look like the equation of a line? Okay, we were adding 3 every time because that's how much it's going up constantly. Whereas today things will multiply by something, a decimal or a fraction or a negative number, or whatever. Okay, so we're going to do the same learning targets. Determine if it's uh, geometric. Find an explicit or recursive formula. Um, find specific terms. All that good stuff. All right, so a geometric sequence is an ordered list of numbers. I can't spell all of a sudden. Where the terms have a common Okay, this is not going to be a good day. I swear it's charged. It's turned off. Common ratio. We're going to call that common ratio R, and it's going to be what we're multiplying by. So a really easy example would be um, one, three. 9, 27, 81, okay? So here the common ratio would be I'm multiplying by 3. Question so far? Um, just to clarify, you might want to write this notation down, I don't know. But anytime you wanted to find that ratio, you could take a term and divide it by the previous term. Yep. Do you remember how to write previous term? N minus 1. Yep. This is just how to, this is just how to find a ratio. Yep. So what this one, I don't think anybody would have needed to do that, right? But if you had, you could have done 27 divided by 9, 9 divided by 3, 81 divided by 27, and you would have figured out that it was the ratio was 3. When it's icky numbers, you might have to figure out what they were multiplying by by dividing to the terms. All right. So anybody remember what explicit meant, the idea of any kind of explicit form? It's based on what? It's based on the term number. So it's going to have an N in it that's going to tell you the term number. So um, I, does your worksheet use A sub N, U sub N, P sub N, B sub N, A sub N? Okay. I just, sometimes I worry that you think that means arithmetic, and it doesn't. It's just a letter. All right. So what are the two things you have to know about any sequence? Yes, the starting number and the difference, or in this case, the ratio. Okay? So the one we just had a minute ago, 1, 3, 9, is different than say 9, 27, 81 because of where they start, right? The ratio is the same, but they're different. Okay, how do we write a sequence that is based on the term number? How would you tell me how to get to the next one? 
take the first term and do what? Times, right? Because we're multiplying, not adding the ratio. Now, we're going to multiply by r over and over and over again. How do we write multiply by something over and over and over again? Exponent, okay? Yesterday, the formula was, why was it n minus 1? Because to get the 10th term, you only needed to multiply, to add the difference 9 times, right? Well, what do you think is going to happen here then? Yes, very good. It's going to be to the exponent of n minus 1. That is explicit form, and it is on your gray sheet. Anybody have it out to double check us? You find it, Brie? Find it? Is it on there? Okay. So if I wanted to know the 32nd term of this, I'd say it started at 9, and we're multiplying by 3 31 times, and that would be a giant number. Okay? I really don't care what it is. All right. The recursive form, does anybody remember what recursive means? Based on the previous term. Very good. So two parts to this one, right? This is the one you have to send me two separate things. You have to tell me the first term is, and every term after that, I take the previous term. And because we're saying these are geometric, what are you always doing? Multiplying by something, whatever R is. Yep. But the important thing you, and this, you'll, you won't have trouble with figuring out the formula, one because I'm not going to give you a super icky one for that question, but you have to remember that when I says when it says write a recursive formula that there's two parts. You have to tell me the first term and how to get to the next term based on the previous. Okay. So, is there a common ratio? Well, if I do eight over negative sixteen or negative four over eight or two over negative four, so I take each term and divide by the previous by getting the same ratio every time. Okay. So r is negative one half or negative 0.5. It's equivalent. I don't care. Okay. What about this one? I don't think this is working, is it? Because here they took half, but this isn't half. And this isn't half. Right? Everybody good? Okay, find the common ratio, so I guess they're telling us these are. So how would you do this if you didn't know? You would say 2 times some ratio became 4 thirds and then work backwards, right? But can we eyeball it? What's happening? Just ignore the 2 for a second. What's happening to the top and the bottom? So does that work? Okay, if I were to solve this equation that I wrote here, we would get rid of this by taking half. So we'd get four six or two thirds. Um, find the next three terms. So what's the next three terms? 32 over 81 sounds right. One twenty eight over that's lovely. All right. Do we need to do one more of those? I don't care about the next three terms, maybe, but what can you tell me the R on this one? It's definitely negative, though, right? Because it goes negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. That means they're multiplying by a negative. All right. I vote we don't need the next three terms. What do you think? Could do that if you had to, right? Okay. Um, find the common ratio in the first four terms. How do we find terms given, oh, what kind of formula is this? 
it says right there explicit, but it is because it has the n in it, so we could put in what to find the first term? n equals 1. If I put a 1 in here, what would I get? Yeah, because it would be 2 times 6 to the 0, which would just be 2. If I put a 2 in, I'd have 2 times 6 to the first, which would be 12. So what did we end up multiplying by? 6. Couldn't we tell from the form that it was going to be 6? So the common ratio is 6, and they want 4 terms. 12 times 6, 72. How'd I do? Times 6. Is it? Thank you. Yep, we only need four. Okay. And the first one was this, and it does count as term one. Okay. Um, I'm a little worried about this question. What's What are people going to do wrong here? Yes, you have to have those parentheses, okay? And all the negatives. There's a lot of mistakes to be made in geometric sequences if people leave off parentheses. It's safer to put extra. Okay, if I put a zero in real quick, but we can tell r is going to be negative 4 because it's whatever you're doing to a power. If I put a zero, I put a 1 in, oh, it would become 0. So this would become 1. So I'd get negative 1 fourth or negative 0.25 as my first term. If I multiply that by negative 4, guys, negative 4, and then by negative 4 again would become, that wasn't too bad, right? All right, number 10, this is a recursive form. So what does that mean? Okay, so what's the first term? And what's the diff or the ratio? 1 sixth from right here. So a sixth of that would be uh, 18. How'd I do? Then three sixth of that would be one half, and we get to stop. Did I get that right? We don't want to round on these. Okay, you need an exact answer. Um, find the common ratio in the eighth term. So we could keep going out to the eighth term if we had to. Is there a more efficient way to do that? Yeah, negative 2 is the first term. It's being multiplied by what, guys? Negative 4, and we would want to do that 8 minus 1 or 7 times. Yep, so negative 2 times negative 4 to the seventh. Should that be negative or positive? Can anybody predict? To the odd power would be negative, but we got another negative out here, so it's going to be positive. Anybody have an answer for me? Someone else get that? Okay. Eight, six? You, <laughs> you read numbers like I do? Yeah. A little dyslexic? Okay, so that was term eight, just so we're okay with the notation. Um, find the explicit form. Anybody do number 12? What do you have, Isaac? Okay, is that the same as this? Okay, be very careful that you don't do anything like that. Oh, I was going to just draw a big X through it, but apparently we erased it. So, 13. Um, Melanie, can you tell me 13? First term is? No? Are you not doing this? Okay, okay, okay. Times, what's the ratio? Can you tell what they're multiplying by? Yep. 
right? Which would mean multiplying by one third. Good job. Even here to here, one times what became one third would be one third, right? And then to the power of and minus one, that's just the formula, okay? If you were able to simplify that, it would just be one to the n minus one. Would that give you a nifty sequence? <laughs> one, 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 one. All right. Um, find the explicit. Which one do you want to do? We don't need to do two of these. 14? Okay. Uh, find the explicit. So a sub n equals. 16, one half to the n minus one. Can I write it like that? No. You need the parentheses, same on this one. It starts at two when you're multiplying by negative five. You need those parentheses to make sure that it's multiplication and to make sure the negative stays with it. Okay. Are they getting trickier yet or not yet? Not really? Which one? 17? What are we multiplying by there, guys? So what would it look like? Recursive means you're going to say first term is 3. She caught herself. Then how do you get to the next term? A sub n minus 1. Okay, now we wrote that yesterday. That meant minus 2, right? What are we going to write this time? Yet, yeah, I would say put some parentheses, maybe need a multiplication too, just to clarify, but make sure you're very clear that it's multiplying. You could write negative two out in front, right? To show multiplication. You good, Hannah? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Same thing Ariana did a minute ago. This one had an, an R of three. This one would have been a sub 1 is 3 and a sub n is a sub n minus 1 times 3. All right. Um, write the recursive. What's the trick here? Anything? As long as they gave us this form, there's really no trick. Sometimes they'll do something like this and they'll leave this off. And then you have to find the first term, okay? Because the first term is not here. If they left off the n minus 1, the first term would be, I don't know, what's 0.4 times negative 5? Negative 2. And a sub n would be the next term times negative 5. But that's only if they took that off there, okay? So that I changed that question. I took off the n minus 1. If we leave the n minus 1 on there, then we can pick out right away that the first term of this one would be what? 4. Or on this one, it would have been 0 0.4. Yep. And then to get to the next term, you would simply multiply by whatever the power is on the 1 fifth. All right. I hope we're going to get to some trickiness. Find the 11th term and the explicit formula. Well, that's an easy way to find the 11th term. If we write the formula. So a sub n equals first term, anybody? Three halves, which we may need in parentheses, times, what are we multiplying the top by? One, what are we multiplying the bottom by? And then to the power of n minus one. Can't simplify that. You could change them to decimals or something, but. <clears throat> okay, now what? A sub 11 is? Oh, I don't even know. I can't draw a parenthesis. Okay, we really want an exact answer. If this doesn't switch on your calculator, you may need to think about what's going on. The top, 1 to the 10th times 3 is just going to be 3. On the bottom, 2 to the 10th times another 2 would be 2 to the 11th or 2048. Did your calculator do it for you? 
if you do 3 divided by 2 times parenthesis 1 divided by 2 all to the 10th and then do a math enter enter it does at least this one does does everybody's no, no? some it, some won't change it okay yeah it depends on the calculator so you might have to do it in steps everybody clear on what we did let me write that down so the top was three times one to the tenth and on the bottom we had a two and a two to the tenth if we needed to split it apart to make it into a fraction All right, do we need to do this one? What are we multiplying by? R equals negative two, so what would A sub N say? Negative 1.5 times negative two to the N minus one. We're supposed to put in a 11, so this would become negative two to the 10th. It is listed as a decimal. You can give me a decimal, but it needs to be exact, so don't be rounding anywhere. I didn't get a decimal anyway. I got 1536 negative. Anybody get that? All right. 22, give two terms. Okay. Find the term named in the problem in the explicit. All right, so I don't tend to use a formula for this. I tend to think about what's going on. A sub one is three. A sub two, we don't know. A sub three, we don't know. A sub four is 24. And eventually we want a sub 11, but we need to figure out what's happening in here, what we were multiplying by to get this to work. Ideas? Or three, was that good? I would just say three because I would have just subtracted these. We multiplied three times, right? So a 24 is three times something three times. Then what? What do we do first? Divide, so we get eight. Now, yes. This one we can do in our head turns out nice. How do we undo a, a three when it doesn't turn out nice? Power of one third, that's the best answer you can give me. It is a cube root, right? And we have a cube root button. But when it's to the fifth and we need to undo a fifth power, there is a place on the calculator where you can put it in to make a fifth root, but it's easier to just do to the one-fifth power. Do you remember that cancels out? Okay. So I'm going to write that in my notes just so I remember that I did each side to the one-third power. And I got two. So this is multiplying by two, by two again. That seems to be working, yes. But we want the 11th term. I don't have any room, so I'm not going to do out to the 11th term. I want to write a formula. Can someone help me? How do I find the 11th term? The first term times 2, 10 times. Good job, guys. 30, 72, anybody? Okay. Could I have withheld those parentheses? If I put in a multiplication, it would have been okay, three times two to the 10th power, but it's better to just get used to putting it in parentheses, honestly, because if it's a fraction, you need the parentheses, or if it's a negative, you need the parentheses. All right. Okay, what are we gonna do this time? 
negative 4 thirds was multiplied by something how many times till it became 4 over 81? Does that make sense, guys? From 2 to 5? 2 to 3, it was multiplied by once, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, right? Three times, okay? So this is a cubed again. What do we have to do first? Okay, and you could put 4 over 81 in parentheses divided by negative 4 thirds in parentheses, and it would work. I'm going to do the uh, math teacher method of reciprocal, right? So now we have r cubed equals, what's that going to simplify to? Negative 1 over 27, I think. All right. If you want an exact answer, you could cube root the top and bottom. Can you cube root a negative? Cube root, yes. Can't square root, but you can cube root. It should be, anybody? Negative 1 third. Because if you multiply negative one-third times negative one-third, you get positive one-ninth. But when you multiply it by negative one-third again, you get negative one-twenty-seventh. Just making sure that makes sense to everybody. Okay. How do you want to find the twelfth term? Oh, it even says write the explicit formula. So let's write the explicit formula first. Oh, we don't have the first term. So some first term was multiplied by negative one-third and became a second term, right? So if I divide by negative one-third or I multiply by negative three over one, I'm going to get positive four. Did anybody get positive four? So it's four times, what's the ratio again? Negative one third to the n minus one, and we want to find the twelfth term. So it's four times negative one divided by three all to the eleventh. Will it do a math enter enter, or we're going to have to do some? It's four times negative one to the eleventh all over three to the eleventh, because you can split this fraction. That should be negative 4 on the top, right? And 3 to the 11th. Lovely 177147. Am I losing anybody on the exponent powers, how we can simplify those? All right, are we almost done? Okay, last one. Oh, they tricked me. They trick you. This is the first term. They listed it back here, right? So 1.5 was multiplied by r how many times to become 12? Okay, three terms in here. So 12 divided by 1.5 is 8. Well, they're not very creative. What's R again? 2. What's the explicit form look like? And we want the 11th term. Is a decimal going to give us an exact decimal? 1.5 times 2 to the 10th power. I got 1536 again. Did someone get that? A sub 11 would be 1.5 times 2 to the 10th, which is 1536. All right, seem pretty easy? Okay. You have like 15 minutes to do homework almost. Okay. Last Last night was worksheet two, tonight it's worksheet four.
You can do all the problems if you're worried about this next quiz. Some of you need a good five, 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 five in there. Five, 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 five there. Um, but I did put a top 10 to be done <laughs> list on the assignment sheet, okay? Everybody knows what I'm talking about? The assignment sheet that I passed out as part of a packet yesterday? <laughs> 